sleeper trains in Europe have seen a huge renaissance in the last few years, but this has to be their biggest revolution yet. Austria's OBB Nightjet service has introduced brand new sleeper carriages with groundbreaking features and designs, which will completely revolutionise overnight travel across the European continent. I'll be taking an over 13 hour trip from Vienna to Hamburg on the inaugural ride of the Nightjet New Generation in a private sleeper cabin, and the best part is, you'll be coming along with me. Now let's get this show on the rails! I arrived at Vienna's West Station, so my journey begins by taking the tram a few short stops to where our Nightjet train begins its journey, at Vienna's main station. Despite being the main station serving Austria's capital city, Wien Hauptbahnhof only became operational fully eight years ago back in December 2015, though the initial opening of the station for partial operations dates back to December 2012. Wien Hauptbahnhof is easily one of my favourite stations in Europe. The modern design is fantastic and it's so easy to navigate your way through the many shops and restaurants that this station has to offer. And this is despite the station seeing over 650 trains and 268,000 passengers per day, which, combined with traffic from the bus, tram and metro, makes it one of Vienna's most important transport hubs. I'll be travelling in a solo sleeper cabin tonight and therefore have access to the OBB lounge at Wien Hauptbahnhof. Note that if you're travelling in a seat, couchette or the brand new private sleeper pods, these do not grant access to the lounge. Only sleeper cabin passengers on the night jet are allowed to use it. Yeah. Thank you so much. I really love the lounge and all the food and drink on offer here is included with the access, though there isn't anything particularly show-stopping. Nevertheless, compare this to other lounges such as the NS International Lounge in Amsterdam and this is still great, not to mention the spectacular bird's eye view of the station concourse. Thank you, have a nice evening. Yeah? Around 40 minutes before departure, our train is now shown on the departure wall as NJ490 to Hamburg and Amsterdam from Platform 7. The new night jet is the portion towards Hamburg, whereas the Amsterdam portion uses the legacy night jet coaching stop, which looks like this. As you can tell from the outside, these coaches are very old and most date back to the 1950s and 60s, albeit heavily refurbished. There are also double-decker sleepers in Nightjet's fleet, mainly used on the Vienna to Zurich route, and they look like this inside. This is the layout of most of Nightjet's legacy stock, and the new Nightjet is supposed to be a significant improvement in modernity and comfort compared to this, but we'll have plenty of time to see that when we get on board. Okay, before we go up to the platform, a bit of housekeeping. First, any tickets for travelling outside of Austria need to be in paper form, this can either be printed as a PDF like I've done, or from the OBB reception or ticket machines with a booking reference. And second, you need to get a form of ID, such as a passport ready, as the tickets are only valid with that and this will be checked by the onboard host. On platform 7, we can see a large amount of people here to either spot or board the brand new Nightjet train, as well as members of the press covering the event. It's incredibly busy but also fantastic to see under the incredible station roof design. It's worth noting as well, the Hamburg to Vienna route can also be done during the day via an ICE train like the one here, though the journey does take over 10 hours to do, and a lot of time can be saved by taking the night jet. Money would normally be saved in theory, but I'll get into why this might not be the case towards the end of the video. Around 10 minutes before departure, our train pulls in. This is hauled by a Siemens Taurus locomotive dating back to the early to mid 2000s whilst the coaching stock, also built by Siemens, is brand new, having been built over the past two years, with its first inaugural service being tonight's trip to Hamburg. Exciting times! Each set of coaches on the new Nightjet is formed of a total of seven. One seating car, one multifunction car with both seats in the disabled room, three couchette carriages, which all include the sleeper pods, and two sleeper cars, which include sleeper cabins for solo or dual occupancy. I'll be in the latter tonight, specifically coach 411. So let's get on board and check out our room. 411, 
It didn't take very long for me to find my room as we're at the very front of the train in cabins 101 and 102. All cabins, regardless of whether they're a couchette, pod or sleeper, are open prior to the host providing you with your keycard, shortly before or after departure. As soon as you enter your room, you'll need to fill out the breakfast card which is located on the desk. Sleeper cabin passengers get a choice of six items on the menu, and this is then given to the host along with your ticket, who will then serve it to you in the morning and also return your ticket then. You can fill this out with the pen provided in the amenities kit on the desk. Again, more on that later. Okay, let's get settled in as our departure is imminent. Our route sees us travel across Austria into Passau, the German-Austrian border town, after which we make it to Nuremberg, where both the Amsterdam portion detaches and the tourist is swapped for a new locomotive. We then continue to cross Germany into the country's second largest city of Hamburg, with an expected arrival of close to 9am Central European time. And the key word is expected. Now sit back and enjoy the ride. Our departure from Vienna is around 6 minutes late at 2016 Central European time and as we depart we can see a large amount of enthusiasts seeing us off. It's great to see people as excited about this train as I am. My host came to check me in shortly after departure from Vienna and we arrived into our first stop of Wien Meitling shortly after she was done, another one of Vienna's main stations used by 55,000 people daily. Okay, let me show you around my room now. Each standard cabin branded Comfort on the new night jet features a bunk bed, the top deck remaining out even though I have solo occupancy and can be accessed using the ladder here. The control panel next to the door can be used to control the light intensity, but that's not all. It can also be used to provide mood lighting in the room, which is a very nice feature. I think I'll keep it on blue as it matches the night jet colour scheme well. There are also buttons to control the temperature, as well as notify the host if you need anything. Overall, I found the bed's comfort to be okay, but slightly firmer than other sleepers I've ridden on, particularly with the top bunk. The pillows are very soft too, and I also like how the beds now face the direction of travel, as opposed to sideways, so that should make for a very comfortable sleep indeed. In theory. Just underneath the bed is a cushion for converting the table into a sofa if you want, which is done using a handle underneath to push the table down. Each cabin has a power socket by the door, as well as next to the bed, with the latter being accompanied by a USB type A socket. And that's not all. The cabins feature wireless charging for phones or other compatible devices, and works perfectly well despite my phone's thick camera size. Each room occupant is provided with an OBB magazine in this storage bag next to the chargers and just above is a personal reading light that can be rotated using the handle here to suit the needs of individual passengers. A hammer for breaking the window in the event of an emergency is next to the reading light and the call for aid button is just next to the door. Whilst this isn't revolutionary, what is though is the glow in the dark signage for the safety displays in the event the lights go down or the incident occurs in the middle of the night. Brilliant! Each room also features several coat hooks accompanied by a coat hanger, a personal bin and a holder for the keycard to your room so it's in a safe place. You may also be pleased to know that standard cabins also have ensuite toilets and showers now. Previously, this was only available in deluxe sleeper cabins on the night jet, so this is a great move. The light is controlled by this button here, and here can be seen is another personal litter bin and toilet paper encased by a metal lid. The tap is activated by briefly holding onto the button whilst pressing it, with the temperature for this and the shower changed by the above dial. A soap dispenser is also located just in front of the shower head. The shower is cleverly held just next to the sink here, and as with the tap, you'll need to hold on to the button briefly to operate it. You could also use this stand to hold it to operate it hands-free. No need to worry about the water, there's a drain hidden just below the toilet, after which the floor is dry fairly quickly. Overall, this cabin is very well designed. 
but this is just one part of the train where Siemens and Obibir have really gone outside of the box, so I'll just take my keycard and show you around a little bit more. Another thing to note is that the key cards are already registered to a specific room, so there's no need to carry out the activation process as you would on the UK's Caledonian Sleeper, for example. Towards the ends of each carriage, you'll find passenger information screens similar to those Obibir use on its intercity railjet branded services. These show real-time information, including the journey progress. One of the advantages of Europe's rail network is it's a lot less cramped than the UK's, which allows for greater corridor space so it's a lot easier to move around. Here is one of the three couchette carriages. The standard couchette compartments on board the new night jet look like this, and feature four berths, as is the case with the legacy night jet coaches. You may also find similar looking couchettes on the refurbished night jet coaching stock, albeit with slightly less features. Towards the middle of the train is probably what most of you will be interested in, the sleeping pods. This is a first for European sleeper trains and really provides great affordable options for solo travellers, well in theory. My friend Ben was kind enough to let me check out his sleeping pod in further detail to show you what it's like inside. Overall I found it to be surprisingly spacious. When I initially booked my cabin I did so mainly as I thought it would be claustrophobic, but there's a surprising amount of space in here. You're even able to sit down with plenty of headspace too, which is great! The windows are also noticeably smaller and even feature door compartments that split between yours and your neighbour's pods. I won't delve into much more on the pods, so I invite you to check out my friend Nonstop Eurotrips video which covers them in greater detail. One last thing I will mention though is that there are compartments next to the pods for storing luggage, which are again accessed through the keycard. There's also a separate one for shoes too, though it's sadly not a one size fits all as Ben's hiking boots struggle to fit inside them. Luggage space is separate for all four pods and the top ones are accessed through the small steps sticking out of each luggage compartment. Extra luggage space is also provided by lifting the base of the pod as Ben is demonstrating here. Just over an hour later we arrive into Lind. Austria's third largest city, located halfway between Vienna and Salzburg. Just before departure, we can see the level boarding feature in the multi-function room in full effect. That is until it's time to leave. This is conveniently located next to the coach's disabled room, which was sold to the occupants as a regular seat. I was kindly allowed to have a look at the room, which features four beds and wheelchair access to the seats, though the closest reference for the seats would be those used on Mersey Rail's Class 777 units in the UK, so not amazingly comfortable. The door to the room is sliding as opposed to the conventional push-pull, which is a huge step to creating greater accessibility on the night jet. Located next to the room is a wheelchair accessible toilet, though strangely enough, the button wasn't working despite being unlocked, so we were told to open it by pushing it open. As you can see, the inside is very spacious and does the job nicely. I do like how accessibility was thought about well here, but small technical errors really do spoil it, even if it is a brand new train. Taking a look inside the seated compartment, one of the more noticeable features is the huge amount of space for suitcases and other heavy luggage, though the most noticeable is there being no compartments, like on the legacy night jet coaches. Seating is in a 2x2 two two configuration, though as I always say, I find the seats to be a false economy unless your budget is very low or the travel is rather urgent and last minute. These seats are fairly similar to those on the ICE3 Neo, also built by Siemens, that I looked at several months ago. Great for daytime journeys, though not sure I'd want to use them overnight. After catching up with a few friends, I headed back to my room as I had a long day. It was then I found that the vestibule door mechanism had failed and getting through involved prying them open, and this wasn't the first instance of this occurring on this trip. One thing I still need to show you is the amenity kit provided to sleeper cabin passengers. This contains night jet slippers, a face towel, an eye mask, a bottle of water, menu for the onboard drinks and snacks, though this was rather limited. You can see for yourself in the description below. A bag of nuts and the pen which I showed you earlier. Buried at the bottom but not in the shop was hazelnut wafers and some earplugs too. 
I was also given a small bottle of champagne. But as I don't drink, I just gave it to one of my friends instead. There's also free Wi-Fi on board the train, which I found to be pretty good. I was able to access Google Maps to get a live look at our location. As can be seen, we're shortly about to cross the border into Germany, and shortly afterwards arrive into the German-Austrian border town of Passau. The police also board the train here to carry out routine passport checks, which does regularly happen when crossing the borders between the two countries. It was after leaving here where I decided to call it a day. I'd also like to say I hope you're enjoying the video so far, and don't forget to subscribe for more weekly content such as this. It's free and the best way to support my work. Thanks! Okay, good night, and I'll see you in the morning. Possibly a lot earlier than planned. Three hours later. ...at all times to answer any questions you may have, and to provide you with a range of snacks and drinks in the couchette and sleeper carriages. Please be sure to observe the train's silent hours between 9pm and 8am to enable other passengers to enjoy a relaxing night's sleep. No further announcements will follow during this time. A little later. And a good morning from somewhere in Germany. Overall, a decent sleep minus the abrupt wake-up call at 3am. So what happened was the Taurus locomotive failed during the shunting manoeuvre at Nuremberg. It's there where the set bound for Amsterdam leaves ours and the one from Innsbruck joins ours for the final leg to Hamburg. Consequently, the system on the coaches was reset, which resulted in the lights and announcements coming up well into the silent hours. The Taurus is still in the Consist too, being hauled by a Deutsche Bahn Class 101 locomotive instead as we travel across Germany. The Taurus remains due to the lack of compatibility between the Class 101s and the new night jet sets, so this allows the former to continue hauling our set and complete the journey to Hamburg. The current estimated delay for the train is now over three hours late, and this has led to a delay for breakfast too, so let's just sit back and enjoy the sunrise for a bit. So for that they have this, this kind of unpublished rule, but if you buy yourself I also went to go chat with a few friends. There we also gained interviews for one of the local Austrian news outlets, which was fun. Sadly, our Class 101 locomotive can't go as fast as the Taurus, but still manages a healthy speed of 200 km per hour. Both the Taurus and new night jet set have a top speed of 230 km per hour. Not long before reaching Hanover, breakfast is finally served and man was it delicious despite how basic it looks. I've linked the menu in the description below if you want to see the breakfast options for yourself. Hanover is the last stop before reaching the Hamburg suburbs, around two hours from now. We were originally due here close to 7am, but we instead reached here just past 10, with a surprisingly quick dwell time in an attempt to pick up the delay. Our last stop before our destination is Hamburg Harburg, where our stay is slightly longer than planned due to there being no available paths into the Hauptbahnhof. I used the opportunity to get off for some fresh air and check out the Class 101 hauling both the Taurus and the two night jet sets at the rear. After a total of nearly 16 hours, we now come to the end of our journey on the inaugural new night jet. What are my thoughts? I really do think that these trains are an immense upgrade from the legacy stock used on the night jet, and both Siemens and OBB really went above and beyond with the design and execution of the trains. And whilst there are a few teething problems, I have full confidence they'll be ironed out in due course, as the sets settle into regular passenger use. The price I paid for this trip was €245 Euros for a single ensuite cabin, though for the 3 hour delay I recovered 50% of the total ticket cost, bringing the revised total down to €122.50. Euros this particular trip was value for money, despite the delay. However, OBB have recently introduced a dynamic pricing system for journeys on the night jet going into 2024, which means prices for a single cabin can range from around €200 Euros to just over €1,000, which is ridiculous and not a great way to encourage more passengers to use the night jet. The sleeper pods now range from €55 Euros to €130 Euros approximately, 
depending on the dates, which is inconsistent and something OBB need to fix. Anyway, we arrive into Hamburg's main station, just over three hours late. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Now you've heard from me, I want to hear from you. What did you think of the brand new night gym? Have you travelled on it yet? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, don't forget to like and share it as well as subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications for more content such as this every week. Well, my three hours in Hamburg has now turned into three minutes, so I now need to replan my connecting service as I continue to travel through Germany. But I'll leave you with the departure of the night jet for its final destination of Hamburg Altona. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.